Javier Dominguez, clearly the more experienced player. He's also got a better record. Javier is actually a co-leader of the entire tournament with a nine-one record. Noriyuki, though, eight and two, a really solid start as we start to transition our way to the second half of this day two competition next round. This is really important, right? Finish strong in standard before you pick up and get things rolling. And as you can see, they are rolling. The pace of play in this game match much quicker than the one in our last, as we've already got some action here. It looks like Tapland into Heart's Desire on the other side. It's Gilded Goose. Now, interestingly, Noriyuki's on gruel food here, Paul. We haven't seen that one on camera yet. What's the game plan? Yeah, Nor uh, Noriyuki actually turning back the, the clock a little bit here. There was the mono green food deck that was quite, quite a popular deck at the last event, uh, but it has since kind of phased out in popularity. But Noriyuki basically taking that mono green food shell with Gilded Goose, Trail of Crumbs, Wicked Wolf, and Feasting Troll King, and choosing to add red to have a few more interactive spells. So he gets to play with four copies of Bone Crusher Giant that he has in, has in the main, and also gets some pretty solid sideboard options like the Akron War you see in his hand. And there's a pair of Love Struck Beasts kind of going out of here. There's only a token so far for Dominguez. You see the actual beast itself on the other side. When you see this, the thing that you usually comes to mind is the Great Henge. And as you can see from Mori, there it is right in, the, right in their hand. Yeah, and Javier does need to be mindful of that. This is, you know, the Great Henge is definitely one of the cards in this matchup. Really, really important. And uh, may, need to make sure that you have an answer here. Um, Javier actually choosing not to foretell the side coming uh, because he just has a mana to just hard cast it here. Okay, gooses and geeses and trail of crumbses. And look at this. Oof. Javier considering using Sod coming on a gilded goose here. Yeah, this is this is tough because it is his only counter spell. So so if Noriyuki next turn has access to something like a Great Henge, um, you know, he will be able to deploy it. Now, Javier can disrupt that strategy by just bouncing the Love Struck Beast, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the reason why he spent so so long considering that line is because with Gilded Goose in play, it just makes it so that it's very, very easy. It's trivial to turn on the activated ability of that Trail of Crumbs, where now you just tap, sack of food, and uh, generate card advantage that way. You're gonna see plenty of that, I'm sure, in the historic rounds, but that interaction, of course, still extremely powerful in standard. Boy, in the great tug of war of this game three decider, Javier just made a nice move. He just got two permanents off the battlefield, then followed up with his own Elder Gargaroth and kind of said, here, you have to deal with this now. You're not gonna be able to get down the Great Henge this turn and you're not gonna be able to start going off with Trail of Crumbs either. Yeah, and the issue with Red Green is you don't really have any clean ways to answer uh, Elder Gar Gargaroth. So Nor Noriyuki um, borrowing it for a couple of turns here, um, just so Javier doesn't get to get any attacks in right now. This is great. Back and forth battle between these two. The dust has not settled on this game on who's going to be ahead, who's going to win. You can see Javier quickly check the Akroan War. How long do you get that Gargaroth for? What's going to happen to my other creatures? But this doesn't look super great for him. He's just going to pay the cost for Obosh here. Now, he does have Brazen Borrower, Brazen Borrower, <laughs> Bone Crusher, and a Lovestruck Beast on the Adventure Zone, though. So he's still got tons of action to come. And as you can see, Javier chose not to play any creatures because if he did, they would all just run into Elder Gargaroth's mouth on the following turn because Chapter 2 of the Akron War states that all creatures your opponents control must attack next turn of Abel. So instead, Javier just putting the Obosh into hand and keeping the side coming. And now you're seeing Javier um, being rewarded for being patient with the side coming and having it available to counter the powerful legendary artifact here. Yeah, this is a, a scenario where saw it coming is very aptly named as Javier Dominguez was playing around and with the great henge in mind because he did in fact see it coming going back two turns and now gets paid off as you mentioned for his patience and the big setup there. Yeah, however, keep in mind though, I mean, now we have four food on the battlefield with a trail of crumbs in play. I mean, the longer this game goes, if Javier can't find card advantage engines of his own, I mean, Noriyuki is just going to keep getting slowly ahead on cards here. Elder Gargaroth's going to hit the red zone to create a beast friend. And Javier's going to go ahead and protect his life total, at least the best he can. Soak up a damage. 
Yeah, and that makes sense because, of course, that token would have to attack next turn into right. the Gargaroth, and you don't want the Elder Gargaroth to trigger again. So this block is, uh, this that block was very good. Kazandu Mammoth is the follow-up here for Mori, and he is putting on significant pressure here onto Javier Dominguez. But keep in mind, that Elder, Elder Gargaroth will come back to Javier Dominguez's side of the battlefield next turn. That's right. <clears throat> You're supposed to close out the game before the third chapter on a Crowan War, ideally, and that has not happened here. It's been powerful. It's allowed Mori to build out a board and even apply some pressure to the life total, but it is not the end game. But we are at the point where Noriyuki has all kinds of extremely powerful six mana creatures that he can play. We're talking about Feasting Troll King, Vorinclex, and even a copy of Kogla the Titan Ape, which would do a really nice job of just trading with this Elder Gargaroth that's in play. Okay, it looks like he's gonna start digging. This is why Javier didn't want him to be able to do this with the Gilded Goose, because as you mentioned, it makes it almost free to do so with the Trail of Crumbs. Yeah, and, and I think you're going to see... Mammoth in. Oh. He has the Fabled Passage at the ready here if there's a block. Yeah, I thought he was going to maybe potentially just keeping it as a defender with Fabled Passage up against the Elder Gargaroth if Javier cho chose to attack. But uh, also possibility that Noriyuki will just be able to put enough on the battlefield already given his hand. This is interesting. Look at this. Javier Dominguez is going to block with Lovestruck Beast, which is going to force the Fabled Passage, but it's just a chump? I suppose so. Kind of rough. Uh, he might be considered... So that block is a nod to Embercleave. Javier mm. does not want to die to Embercleave there, which is why he went with the block, because if he, if he didn't block at all, that would have been an attack for 16. Gotcha. Okay, follow-up play is another Love Struck Beast. And again, Mori able to apply significant pressure here to Dominguez, but Dominguez hanging in there, and he's got the Elder Gargaroth at the ready now. And we're going to see an Obosh here. Okay. And that Elder Gargaroth is going to get in for, for 12 damage this turn. Wow. May as well get in with the Borrower too, right? Yeah, get in with the Borrower, get in with the Gargaroth. Uh, Noriyuki will be able to double block with Lovestruck Beast and a 1-1. Uh, he will be able to get that Gargaroth off the battlefield, but I'm not sure if Javier uh, can win if he just chooses to do nothing. He might need to just try to dig, but it looks like he's keeping it back. And and this is just completely fine if you're on Noriyuki's side. You're continuing to develop your board. You still have two activations left with the Trail of Crumbs. Uh, this Gilded Goose is just continuing to provide Noriyuki card advantage. And now, with Fire Prophecy and the Bone Crusher Giant, he can cleanly get rid of that Obosh that's in play, too. There's Trail of Crumbs getting activated yet, yet again. As you mentioned, you pointed this out a few turns ago, Paul, but that avalanche of cards from the Trail of Crumbs is really added up now as Mori used the Akroan War to buy him a bunch of time to set this up. I wonder if we're going to see a, a triple removal spell to get Gargaroth off the battlefield. Wow. Look at all the Bone Crushers, too. Two more in hand now for Mori. And if you're Javier, at this point, you, you of course, can't really play around Embercleave. He's just going to try to make the, the best blocks that he can. He does know about the Bone Crusher Giant. Which so, is key here, yeah. And he's blocking accordingly, not blocking the Love Struck Beast. Of course, we know that there's a Fire Prophecy in Noriyuki's hand, which will be able to get the Elder Gargaroth off the battlefield. But now Noriyuki is going to leave Javier with an empty board if Javier chooses to block the 3-3 here. That's right. The combination of Fire Prophecy and Stomp could leave everything gone. This is a big draw step here. Let's see if Javier can find something maybe to interact. He's going to crack a Fabled Passage. No, he decides not to. No, it's a Lovestruck Beast. So he's going to drop down to 10 
But with the damage assigned to Obosh and to Elder Gargaroth, you can see how it lines up perfectly with what Mori's trying to do. Fire Prophecy to finish off the Gargs. Yeah, Javier needs another Gargaroth. Edgewall Innkeeper would also be a pretty nice draw, given that yeah. he's got all these adventure creatures. But yeah, I mean, all the Bone Crusher Giants, I mean, you know, Javier's going to run out this Brazen Borrower probably to just kind of use up his mana. That's going to get stomped. I mean, oh, never mind. No, it looks like mori has got no chill going here. He's just going to play this Bone Crusher Giant. Makes sense. Yeah, just try to apply maximum pressure. This does give him lethal on board if there's no blocker Oof. by the other side. And it looks like Dominguez was trying to rip the Edgewall Innkeeper that you mentioned a minute ago, Paul. Decided to keep the Brazen Borrower in hand there, as it doesn't really block anyway. But unfortunately nice... for him, he didn't find it. Yeah. I mean, this is just way too many cards. Noriyuki was able to sacrifice all four food tokens and yeah. get a card every single time with that Trail of Crumbs. Pretty rough. He's going to go immediately to combat here. Nine coming in against ten life here from Dominguez. And Javier just saying, look, if you've got another stomp, I mean, you got another stomp. I need to block to try to get ahead here. And also, he's got that side coming. So so that's going to be a decent opportunity for him to keep the board somewhat stable here. But Noriyuki is still with a slight edge because he's going to find another card here with that Trail of Crumbs. So saw it coming is going to keep the Lovestruck Beast on the battlefield. Barely. Yeah, Noriyuki could choose to sack of food here to see maybe if he can find another Bone Crusher. I'm not sure if he's gone through all four, though. He's cast a bunch this game. Yeah, I think three. Soul Seer. That doesn't look big enough, does it? It is, it is an answer to Lovestruck Beast. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. The Gilded Goose, by the way, just still so wreaking havoc here. And oh. it's scavenging news. Witch's Oven? I mean, we're, we, are, we are getting ready for the next round here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. We can, we can sacrifice these one ones, cash them in for some food, turn those foods... Turn, turn, turn the food into actual permanence. I mean, I, I just don't see Javier having the ability to, to just grind through this card advantage engine. Trade, and kill. Not to mention, this scavenging ooze is going to be gigantic. Yes. Big top deck here for Dominguez because he's really just out of gas and needs to find something like immediately and it's got to be something really good. Yeah, he's going to need to have to deal with like a 10-10 scavenging ooze. Something. It's going to be at least a 6-6 this turn. But the only answer for that is a Brazen Borrower. And if he draws a Brazen Borrower, he's going to be in a lot of trouble here because he has all these other spot. things to, uh, to fight through. So how about Innkeeper? Innkeeper is a start for sure. Boo! Oh! Innkeeper off the top of the library here for Dominguez. Okay, so you're telling me we've got a chance. Innkeeper into Borrower. Yeah. Into Borrower? Oh, no. it's into another land. And that is not going to be good enough. And you can see Dominguez is... Ugh, got teased there. Almost had it. And in the meantime, Gilded Goose now is going to make a food token. And start going through that again. This is just rough here as the the players really did kind of exchange resources for the first four or five turns of the game and it's just been trail of crumbs yeah just i mean dominating Javier, this game Javier did a, a decent job of trying to keep up just because of the innate card advantage provided by adventure creatures however uh, i mean ultimately just unable to go through this avalanche of card advantage from the trail of crumbs i mean this scavenging ooze is basically forcing a chump block every single turn because there are way more than enough creatures in the graveyard to turn that into a 10-10. Right. Uh, 
I imagine Noriyuki is going to want to pile on here, put another permanent into play. Um, could also run out of Witch's Oven here and see what else he can find here off the top of with the Trail of Crumbs. Or just make the world's largest scavenging ooze. He is going to go for some type of record here, it looks like. <laughs> Thing the is... Go ahead. You, you kind of want to... You kind of want to keep some creatures in the graveyard, right? 10-10 is like the sweet spot because your opponent's at 10. However, if your opponent draws a Brazen Borrower, you want to make sure that there's a little extra gas in the tank, right? So that you can kind of regrow right. it if they do happen to bounce it. Great Henge with no hand. I mean, assuming that he can survive this turn, because that scavenging news is just off the charts. It showed up to the party hungry and then realized it was all you can eat. And this thing has gone to town. It's a 10-10 currently. Now it'll be an 11-11. So this edge wall innkeeper will get in front of the scavenging. Oh, well, and that'll get it done. And cancel the order. That's a crone war off the top of the library here for Mori. He can use that to steal the edge wall innkeeper and get the job done. He evens up the score here with Javier Dominguez. Noriyuku Mori, well done, is now uh, one of the co-leaders potentially, depending on how the other rounds went.